comes at the same time that we're getting new details about the Dallas sniper and his movements before his deadly ambush last week when he killed in cold blood five police officers. The shooter's parents are now coming forward, responding to the heinous actions of their son who hunted down and executed those five officers. I love my son with all my heart. I hate what he did. The Blaze released that short preview of their interview. This, as we also learned, that the gunman had several weapons on him during the attack, as well as bomb material at his family home. Let's go now live to Dallas, where we're joined by CNN's Ed Lavendera. Ed, obviously, the killer talked about killing white people. He talked about killing white police officers, more specifically. Are police any closer to learning when he snapped and, and when he began planning this horrific attack? I think that's the part that they're still trying to nail down outside of those moments in the moments before uh, this killer w was taken out there in that second floor building of the community college in downtown Dallas and the words that were exchanged with the negotiators during that time. That's really the most information they have about his, his intent and investigators are still trying to pour through all of the evidence they're collecting to figure out what his ultimate motivation and what his ultimate goals might have been. Investigators are still trying to unravel the twisted plot of Micah Johnson and what set him off on this deadly rampage. Dallas police investigators are piecing together more than 170 hours of officers' body cam video, as well as dash cam footage and surveillance camera images to piece together a timeline of how the deadly attack unfolded. <laughs> Dallas Police Chief David Brown says investigators are still working to make sure that Johnson did indeed act alone. We're going to follow every lead till it's exhausted, until I'm satisfied that this was the lone person. Detectives are analyzing Johnson's arsenal seized on the scene and in his home. Law enforcement sources tell CNN Johnson brought two handguns and an assault-style rifle to the attack. Sources say it appears the weapons were legally purchased, some bought online. But there are still questions about what his plans were for the explosives found in his home. There was a large stockpile. One of the bomb techs called me at home to describe his concern of how large a stockpile of bomb making materials he had. And there are still questions about the cryptic writings left at two locations inside the community college building where Johnson was killed, writing the initials RB in his own blood. I think that this killer obviously had uh, some delusion. Uh, there was quite a bit of rambling in the journal. Uh, that that's hard to decipher. I, I love my son with all my heart. I hate what he did. The parents of Micah Johnson have spoken out for the first time in an interview with The Blaze. His mother says Johnson left the military after six years highly disillusioned, calling him a good son. The ideal that he thought of our government, of what he thought the military represented, it just <clears throat> didn't live up to his expectation. Over the weekend, protesters took to the streets across the country with more than 300 arrests. In Atlanta, thousands shut down major highways. In St. Paul, Minnesota, police say some protesters threw rocks and Molotov cocktails at officers below them. In Baton Rouge, police in riot gear took on protesters. The images and tension from around the country are on the mind of Dallas Police Chief David Brown. Don't be a part of the problem. We're hiring. We're hiring. Uh, get off that protest line and, and, and put an application in. And Jake, this is the beginning of an emotional week here in Dallas. Uh, the Dallas Police Association organizing a vigil for tonight in front of City Hall and funerals for those officers begin tomorrow. Jake. Ed Levendera, live for us in Dallas, Texas. Thank you so much.